So today we have two bowls that you've probably seen kicking around and I have yet to finish them. Um, they both have this nice texture on the outside. This one has that same sort of texture on the inside. And this one, texture on the outside, smoother texture on the inside. What I'm going to do is I have three Boggs flat spoke shaves. Um, I had three initially because I was teaching and then <clears throat> I decided to keep them all because it's super handy um, when I'm doing a lot of spoke shave intensive work to have three ready to go. So you don't have to stop and sharpen. And then when you do sharpen, you just do three in a row and, um, and you're good to go for a long time. Actually going to ease the edge here and create another facet around the entire perimeter and it just cleans it up a little bit even though this is a rough look I want it to still look clean there's sort of a fine line there for design of what looks clean and what looks messy even if it's um even if it's a rougher look in general with design I like to to tell my students in classes that you can have wabi-sabi, you can have a little bit of weird going on, but in order to make that work and to be conveyed to other people, there really needs to be intention in that. Sometimes I feel like when it gets a little too wild, it's not that I don't like wild, because I do. Just that when you go a little bit crazier, Think about what that looks like to somebody else that wasn't working on it. I think sometimes we get so caught up in what we're doing ourselves that we think that that's getting conveyed our own vision. Um, and sometimes the theme, even if it's wild, needs to be conveyed consistently. So I'm cutting down, cutting down, flip it, and the same goes for this. So this is, grain orientation is with you all the time. So it's a good thing to learn it at the beginning. If you're petting the cat in terms of like a brush, let's say that this is acting like the grain here, then I always want this cut to come down. If I were to try and cut this up, I would just pull it like I would pull these bristles. Here we go. And this is one of those things that I don't actually put it into a vise because me holding it is the best vise Using it one-handed, I've angled it. Let's see if I can put it like this. So I've angled it. So you can see how I've skewed it. I'm not doing this. It's gonna be one, really hard to ride that edge because now there's only really one point of contact along this. So if I turn it to its side, there's a longer point of contact there. So I can keep it a little bit steadier. And I went a little too deep on that cut. So I just rest it against the bench, which I know is flat, and then I reference the face plate, and then I tighten up again. This way I'm going from a light cut, or maybe even no cut, if I've made it a little too tight of an adjustment. I do this, see where I'm at. If I need to make an adjustment, you can either take a little mallet and tap on the top of this, or what I like to do is flip it over and give it a light, light tap on the bench. Um, if it's still too heavy of a cut. I make sure to rock it forward with these ones. You can see there's a little bit of rock there. I rock it forward, tighten it up. It's a lot lighter of a cut. On this side of the spoke shave is taking a lighter cut than this side. Don't get too caught up in trying to make this even because really that's an advantage. So if this is taking a heavy or light cut and this the opposite, then you've got two cuts in one. The spoke shave isn't really a tool where you're looking to get a full width cut anyway. So I like to almost offset it. So making one side heavy and one side light. And usually I do that without even trying. I would typically use milk paint and I have in the past. Um, but I also use old house paint. And I am going to paint all of these high spots. Um, 
I'm gonna put a roller over them and hit all these high points with gold. Perfect, perfect.